So you may have just picked up your iPhone 14 and you might be trying to figure out some of the best tricks and tips that you can actually utilize on your specific phone. So I'll go ahead and do my best to kind of break down the best tricks and tips that you should probably check out. The first thing I would recommend doing though, as always, is to just update your phone as often as you can, especially if it's one of these newer devices. If you have an iPhone 14 or 14 Pro, whatever ones you have, you are stuck on iOS 16. There's no way to go down, so you can't have a more stable version of software if you want the older one. So what I would recommend doing is going into your iPhone settings as always, clicking on the general option there, clicking on software update, and what I would recommend doing here is just updating your phone. Now you can see I did not update my phone, but this update in and of itself, 16.1, actually brings some really cool features. And one of these features is actually live activities. So I didn't update for the basis of me showing you that specific thing, but within this update, you actually do have a new option here called live activities. Now, what I would recommend doing is if you already have Face ID and everything set up, go through here after updating your phone and enable the live activities option, which should be right down here. Now, live activities, as I've showcased before, actually showcases some really cool things within your iPhone. So it basically gives you a live update for your specific you know, device. So this is really cool. So this is really cool because for any notifications that you get down here for apps that are supported, not every app is going to be supported, for apps like you know football applications, for Uber, for Lyft, for anything like that, it'll give you one persistent notification that'll just keep refreshing. And that is a really cool thing. It's They look really beautiful if the you know, developers do it right. And I think that is a really cool thing that Apple implemented within iOS 16 and that does come natively with it with your iPhone 14 as long as you did update it so that's why it's super important to update your phone now another really cool thing within iOS 16 is actually your Wi-Fi passwords so now we have the ability with your iPhone 14 to see the Wi-Fi password of your device that you are connected to so what you can do here is you can just make your way over to your iPhone settings right here and you will be able to see your password basically right there so all you'll pretty much have to do for the most part is just go and click on the password and you should be able to see it. Now here you also have the ability of turning on low data mode if you want to and all these other options, but this is a really cool thing. All you have to do is just pretty much click on that password icon right there and the password will pretty much be shown to you and that is all you have to do there, which is so awesome. Now another really cool thing that I've demonstrated so many times at this point is drag and drop. So this is something that I've just always looked forward to with any iPhone of all time. And I think iPads have had this for a little bit of time too, but with iOS 15, we have the ability of drag and drop. And I do think with iOS 16 on your iPhones, it's, you know, especially with the iPhone 14, it's definitely smoothed out a little bit. So now you can go ahead, essentially, if you want, you can just hold down on an icon like this and you can go ahead and drag and drop it. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and drag and drop a link to my notes. What I can do is go in here while I'm still holding down this other thing right here. I can go and create a new note, drop this specific note right there. And that is all I have to do. That is a really cool thing that Apple implemented the last version, and I do think with the iPhone 14 as well as iOS 16, it actually kind of improved that specific feature a little bit more, which I think is actually really cool. Now with our iPhone 14s, we have a lot of improvements within our iPhone as well with our camera. So our iPhone 14s, whether you have the 14 or 14 Plus, you do have the ability of utilizing a wider ultra-wide camera. So those things are really cool. So within our iPhone 14 camera, if we go and open it up, in and of itself, there are some really cool improvements. The first thing I would recommend checking out though is with action mode. So action mode is within our video mode. So if you just go and click on video, you'll basically come into your panel right here. Now action mode is in the top left. If you didn't look closely, you might've just missed it. So it's right next to the flash. So this, if you have this enabled, you'll see this little pop-up that comes up here that you know says action mode. Now what this does, and this is pretty much a standard video, you can still change the resolutions up here and you can still go 0.5x or you can do up to 3x zoom. So you can't go 5x zoom, but you can still do 3x zoom. And what you can do here, it's basically like a super stabilized video. So to give you some examples, if I'm going through and if I'm like running with my phone, but I wanna make a video of the sky, well, if I go and enable action mode, I can go ahead and be running and I can still capture the video of the sky and it'll be more stabilized. It's still going to be a little shaky probably, but it's going to be way less shaky than if I had this off and I can pretty much, you know, just shake my phone like this. Now I will preface a few things. One, I probably wouldn't recommend using action mode like 24 seven. I don't know if it you know affects storage too much, but you basically don't want a super stabilized video probably every single time. It can make things look a little weird here and there. So you know having action mode enabled all the time may not be the best thing, but that is another really cool option that we have. But also like I mentioned before with our iPhone 14, cinematic mode also got a really big improvement. In my opinion, this is probably a really big thing that Apple did here, which I'm really happy about. We now have the ability within cinematic mode to actually go up to 4K video if we want to. 
So cinematic mode, as I demonstrated a billion times before, basically showcase, they basically blur out the background a little bit, which I think is actually really cool. And personally, I really do like that. So with cinematic mode, what you can do is you can go ahead and pretty much up the top right corner, you can click on that HD and you can go up to 4K. So that is really awesome. So you can get a higher resolution of this specific filming option, which this filming option is really cool, as I mentioned before. Now, I don't know if you can do 4K at 60, you can do 4K at 24 frames per second, or do 4K at 30. I wonder if you can do 1080p at 60, so you cannot do 1080p at 60 either, but still, that is a really cool option that we have on our phones that, again, not a lot of people probably know. So that in and of itself is really cool. Now, zooming out once more, you can see that if we go ahead and hop into our camera, you know, again, in under video or cinematic mode, the screen automatically brightens up. That's because we have HDR enabled by default. So that's a cool feature. A lot of Instagram videos are like this too. If you make your way over to your settings of your iPhone though, another thing that you may want to check out is the built-in camera options within your iPhone settings. So if you go into your iPhone settings, you click on camera, you may want to go ahead and enable and or disable a few of these options down here. Now, personally, I typically keep these fairly stock, but there are a few things that I go ahead and change. The first thing under formats, you may just want to go ahead and you know, come here. You may want to change this to most compatible. High efficiency is, I think, a really cool thing. But if you ever want to you know, change your photos to like JPEGs or something, most compatible might be the one you may want to change it to. Hopping back out, record video, you can keep it the same. Record slow-mo, you can keep it the same. Under preserve settings, this is one that I typically go ahead and enable as well. Down all the way here under live photo, I will typically keep this little option on. The reason for that is because live photo, I like having live photo off. And for those of you who don't know, live photo is pretty much one of those things where if you take a photo, it will pretty much just make the photo a little bit bigger in size. If you hold it down, it'll move it. So you can see it's like a movie. If you send the photo, it's fine, but it's like if they hold it down, they can see a little bit but if they hold it down, they can just see everything. It's just kind of annoying. So what I do is I typically just click up here. I click live photo off. So just like this. And then I also go into my iPhone camera settings one time. You only have to do this one time. And you want to enable that option down here. Now you can also enable action mode as well to keep it on all the time. So this is a new little option. Like I said, though, I probably wouldn't recommend keeping it on. I typically like having my action mode if I want to use it. I can go and enable it if I want. But I probably would not go ahead and enable it just for the time being. Now you can also enable and disable all these other things too. Hopping out of this one, you can also use your volume up button to burst photos. I typically keep this off because sometimes people can just randomly grab your phone, hold the volume up button, just take a bunch of photos. It can be very, very annoying and I don't want to deal with that at all. You can also mirror your front camera up here. And there's a couple other options down here too, like you know, prioritizing your faster shooting and some other things like that. So those things are really cool. Now finally, within our iPhone 14 as well as iOS 16, we now have the ability of doing live text in video. So as most of you know, we can do live text in photos. So you can just copy text like this and you know, it's really cool. And this is a photo, it's not even a, you know, actual video. But you can now do the exact same thing as I just demonstrated in a video as well. So it doesn't really look like I have any videos here, but for any photos that you have, you can just go ahead and copy a, you know, the, copy the text and just copy the text from the photo, which is so cool. So if you're somebody who, you know, is a student and you're taking notes in class and you just make a video of all the notes, well, you can now just go ahead and copy all those, you know, the text from the video and go straight into just, you know, pasting it into like a notes application or something. So that is another really cool option that we have as well. And that pretty much covers up this specific tricks and tips video. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.